and the next question asks us to find the amplitude, period, and range of this thing. Looking at it, we've got 3 as a coefficient of sine, so that means our amplitude is going to be 3. So it's going to be either this one or this one. And if we keep going, we know that our range is 3. Um, sorry, we know that our graph goes from 3 to negative 3. We've got this minus 1 here. So that tells us it's going to be 3 minus 1 at 2. And it's going to go down to negative 3 minus 1 at negative 4. So here we have our range. So I'm guess I'm pretty confident it's going to be this. Now, if we look at um, the coefficient of x, which is 2, we know that our period is 2 pi over 2. Sorry. Um, yeah, 2, 2 pi over n, whatever our coefficient is. So we end up with 2 pi over 2. So we're left with pi. So we've got that as our... Um, as our, as our amplitude, period, and range. Next one along, I wanted to find out what this could be. So we're starting here at 3. We've got to assume that we go down to negative 3 and that our halfway point is at 0. Um, we do that because that's our, our halfway point. So <clears throat> we're starting here. We work our way down. So I'm thinking it could be a cos. So, and because we're starting at the top, we're working our way, then we say it's a positive cos. So that's only one of those. So <clears throat> there's two. We've got that one, or we've got that one. So now we're looking at the period. Pi, 3 pi, assuming that might be 4 pi, and, pi, and I'm saying that's 4 pi because the difference from here to here is pi. From a maximum to 0 is pi, so from a maximum to a 0 is also pi. So this here is going to be 4 pi. So based on that, we've got a period of 4 pi. And one way you can get a period of 4 pi, and that is with this thing here. Because we've got a half x, 2 pi over a half x gives us 4 pi. So it ends up being c. Okay. 